Hi, I'm Jed King, CEO of Sales Factory. Our company was founded over 35 years ago with a simple idea. Help brands listen to the end user and help them solve their everyday problems. This philosophy is the secret behind our winning the PLR series. We're going to take a deeper dive in winning with the merchant and also winning with the market. And remember, they go together because the merchant wants to solve the end user's problems as well. So, what do we know about PLRs? We've been in a few. And over the past few years, we've started keeping score. The scoreboard on this slide is, is real and it hangs in our office. And I'm happy to share with you our record is 121 wins and 10 losses since 2015. And yes, since the last installment of this series, we've won two more PLRs. Today is our second installment in winning the PLR. It's all about knowing the end user. Why? Because if you know the end user better than anyone else, you can not only better serve them, but you can also be a better partner with your retailers. So let's think for a minute all the different ways you can analyze end user data. First one comes to mind in our industry is Pro versus DIY. We talk about that all the time, and it's a really good way to contrast the different needs of people. Another one's male versus female, and sometimes that's helpful. But let's think about generations also. We used to talk about millennials nonstop. They were so different. Um, they didn't leave their parents' homes. They didn't go to work. They just seemed to be different than the rest of us. But that's not really true. In fact, some of them are now uh, 40 years old. They own homes. They have jobs. They're, they're married. They have families. Um, and so they're kind of like the rest of us. How about big retail versus the channel? What do you prefer? That's not always as helpful either because a lot of people shop both. There's one that really is helpful. The best way to organize end user data is attitudes and behavior. Why? Because the science of consumer behavior has proven time and time again that it's the best predictor of future actions. So armed with this kind of information, it'll enable you and your organization to make a big difference. So with that, Mike's going to take a deeper dive. Take it away, Mike. Thanks, Jed. As we think about attitudes and behaviors, it's first important to understand that everything has changed from pre-COVID until now. Uh, shopping behaviors have just changed across channels. Uh, in fact, uh, online preferences skyrocketed to close to 60%. So no matter the category, people are shopping in much different ways than they did before. Next, it's important to look at how are people engaging with your category? Are they shopping in-store? Are they shopping online? Uh, are some consumers leaking from your store and shopping a competitor. Um, we've won a couple PLRs where the deciding factor has been understanding where consumers are leaking, shopping a competitor, how to address those issues and shore up those weaknesses and improve the business for your merchant. Next, it's important to understand how end users are shopping and the traditional model, the traditional funnel of awareness, consideration, shortlist, buy is now obsolete. It's no longer that linear. Consumers are jumping in and out uh, far more fluidly, so we needed to develop a framework that observed uh, and more closely aligned with how consumers are shopping. The learn, shop, buy model uh, observes con consumers jumping in and out of these stages far more fluidly. Um, I'll give you an example for a television, uh, a considered purchase. Uh, many consumers are starting on Google. In fact, 90% start their research on Google wanting to understand the category. Is there innovation that I'm unaware of? Who are the big players? What are the big brands, um, etc. Next, uh, when you're shopping a category, many consumers are going to Amazon to compare star ratings or do side-by-side -side comparisons, look at prices and see where the value is. And then finally, when you're making that big purchase decision for a considered purchase like I did with my television, many people are still going into the store to make that decision, even if they're still connected to their phone while they're in the store. So if consumers are shopping categories differently every single time, well, how do you understand how they're interacting with your category? Well, we went out and spoke to over 50,000 end users over the past year. We have amassed a huge amount of data. When brands understand how consumers behave, they can better meet end user needs, create strategies that are more successful, um, understand where opportunities lie in different categories, and better, better develop solutions for end users. When you solve an end user's problem, 
then you solve the merchant's problem and both the merchant and you win. So let's take a look at that behavioral segmentation. The best segmentations are really simple and very easy to understand and luckily we were really able to achieve that with this segmentation. As you can see, these segments run a pretty broad spectrum of shopping behavior from connected consumers who really like to research a category, they prefer shopping online, they like to engage with brands and really understand um, the brands that they're, they're shopping and, and engaging with, all the way to impressionable impulse shoppers who trust their gut, they prefer to shop in store, convenience and location are really big drivers for them. Um, and so you can see there's a pretty broad spectrum in terms of shopping behaviors. Now there's a ton of data that supports this segmentation. So if you'd like to learn more about any one of these segments, we'd be happy to discuss. Don't hesitate to reach out to us. As you can see in this two by two example, another way to take a look at a behavioral segmentation, uh, you can see segments that are um, falling on a pretty broad spectrum of how they interact. Um, reactive or proactive shoppers? Are they making an impulse buy? Or are they planning out their purchases and sticking to a budget? Um, are they engaging with traditional products and brands, things that they're familiar with? Or are they engaging with experimental products, something that's maybe innovative or cutting edge? Uh, you can see as you think through this in, in different categories, these segments are going to behave very differently uh, across different categories. I'll give you an example. Um, recently, we purchased a new car seat for our son. I probably spent 50 plus hours on YouTube, uh, Amazon, looking at star ratings and reviews, uh, comparison that was on blogs. I even went in store to take a look at the, the um, different offerings that they had in store to compare. And I was really behaving as a compared, uh, connected compare shopper. I'm told that when you have your second child, which we don't yet, um, that you may uh, put a little less time into the research for those, those big first decisions. And uh, we may behave uh, more like uh, an essential engager in, in that instance. So only time will tell. It's also really important to keep in mind that these segments are a mixed bag. Um, each one of these segments has got both pro and DIYers. There's different generations in each one of these segments, male and female. Uh, geography is obviously going to be pretty varied uh, across these segments. And they all shop everywhere. They, they shop online, they shop home centers, and they shop professional distribution um, channels as well. So it's really important and critical to understand how end users interact with your specific category. Next, we're going to take a more detailed look at how some of these segments interact with different categories. Now, it's important to understand and keep in mind that how these segments interact with one category is going to be drastically different to another category. Each category is going to be different. Um, these are just some examples to give you a feel for how this segmentation can lead to really important insights in a category. First, we're going to take a look at how do connected comparers shop for lumber? And this is a segment that does engage online, even in a category like lumber and wood. Um, this is a segment that is the, the leading segment in terms of being willing to take on a new project or try something new. And 94% of the time, they are starting the research for that project online. So they really want to understand uh, a project and, and feel confident that they can execute it. Uh, before they get started. So what you'll find is pros are not going to the store and taking a look down every two by four to see if it's warped or straight, but they may want to learn more about how to work with ePay or where is their walnut available um, with the least amount of defects. And so you will find that either pro or DIY, these, this segment is heavily engaged in online, doing a lot of research to make sure that they are confident in their purchase. Um, and if they do go into store, 72% of them are still connected to their phone online to do comparison shops and make sure that they're confident in what they're purchasing. So it's important to think about how this connected comparer shops in your category. 
Next, let's take a look at how prepared planters look at light bulbs. Now, with a bay that's grown to over 30 feet in big box and thousands of listings online, uh, finding the right light bulb for you has become a lot more confusing no matter your age. And um, you can see here how a segment's behavior is far more important than, say, generation. It doesn't matter if you're a millennial, a Gen Xer, or a boomer. Uh, it, how you behave and how you interact with the category is going to be far more impactful for your purchase decision than your age. And so for prepared planners, um, what it means to them is really understanding how a, a light bulb is going to affect their space. They need to understand uh, color of light and light output. Uh, lumens and how much light do I need in a, in a particular space. They want to understand energy efficiency options and light bulb type. And I can relate to this segment in an adjacent category in landscape lighting because I'm currently trying to figure out solar landscape lighting for our home and trying to make the right decision which option is going to have enough light to light up the space that I'm that I'm trying to light up. So. The uh, engagement for me has looked like a lot of research on YouTube, Amazon, Lowe's and Home Depot, looking at uh, other end users' reviews to see if it matches what I feel like my space is going to match. Finally, let's take a look at how laid-back loyalists shop for appliances. Now, this segment is the least likely to go out and do a lot of research before they make a purchase. Um, they're the most likely to trust their gut. They like to shop in store. Um, they have pretty strong loyalty for brands that they're familiar with, uh, for stores that they traditionally have shopped at and channels that they have traditionally shopped at. And they're the most likely to revert back to their previous shopping behaviors um, from pre-COVID. It's important to be able to understand how consumers are behaving and how they're interacting with your category because that gives you the best opportunity to, to build strategies that take advantage of opportunities uh, and shore up weaknesses to make your merchant the most successful. And if your merchant is successful, then you'll be successful. So thanks for taking a look today as we talked more about winning the PLR, knowing the end user. There's a ton of information that went into our behavioral segmentation and a ton of data that backs that up. So if you have any questions or want to know some specifics, don't hesitate to reach out. We would be happy to discuss it. And keep an eye out for our next segment in winning the PLR series, how to solve your end user's problems.